in this video we're going to look at finding the area of a trapezium. I'm going to start off by drawing two different trapezia. Trapezia is simply the plural of trapezium. So let's go ahead and draw one, that's one, and here is another. So one might look like the one on the left and the other might look like the one on the right. With a trapezium we have two parallel sides. We can show that now with a little arrow and a little arrow. So two parallel sides and these two are parallel. This one has a right angle in it, but you won't always have that. What we have is the top, which is A, and the bottom, which is B. This is A and this is B. We will also have a perpendicular height. The perpendicular height is at 90 degree right angles with the base. So this is going to be the height and on this one because we have a right angle here this is going to be the height. If we want to work out the area of a trapezium with a top of A and a bottom of B and a perpendicular height of H we can say that the area is going to be equal to the top plus the bottom A plus B divided by 2 multiplied by the perpendicular height. You might see this being written now as h over 2 a plus b. It really doesn't matter. It's going to give us exactly the same thing. You might see this bracketed off and that at the back. So that is what we do. What I'm going to do is find the area of two different trapezia using this method and then look at an alternative method by splitting these into triangles and rectangles if you're not comfortable doing this. It would be good if you learnt it this way, um, but you can often get away with it by doing it with rectangles and triangles. So let's go ahead and just draw up one trapezium here, and we will draw another one just here. So for one on the left, we've got here, which looks like the one on the left up there, and then we've got this one, which is going to be a right trapezium. The reason it's right is because we have a little right angle here. So we would be given now, potentially, unless we're told that it's a trapezium, that these now are the parallel sides. So let's say that this is going to be 6 metres. This one is going to be, for example, 10 metres. And we have the perpendicular height, so the straight up height, which won't always be inside the trapezium, right there. And we're going to say that this is going to be now, let's go for 8 metres. We might be given on this one, and I'll change a colour, let's go for uh, red. Let's say that we were given that this was going to be now 7 metres, this was going to be 5 metres, and this one right here was going to be 6.5 metres. I'm just choosing numbers here. Um, it doesn't necessarily, they're just, they're just numbers. Um, so let's go ahead and work out the area. Well, with this one, all we do, we write the area is the top plus the bottom, 6 plus 10. We divide this by 2 and then multiply it by the perpendicular height. This calculation is just the average of the two parallel sides. So when you're working out the average of two numbers, you add them together and you half them. So it's the average of the, perpen uh, the, average of the parallel sides multiplied by the perpendicular height. With this calculation, you can do it any way you want. You can add this right here. So 6 uh, plus the 10 is 16 divided by 2 is 8. 8 times by 8, well, that's going to give me 8 times 8 is 64. And the units are going to be meters squared. We know for an area, our units will always be something squared. So nice and straightforward, nice and logical. The other way that you could do it is simply say now that 8 over 2 is going to be 4. So it'd be 4 times by 16. With this one just here, and let's put it in red as we did the numbers in red, then we have that the area is going to be the top plus the bottom, the 5 plus the 7, divided by 2, multiplied now by the perpendicular height, which is going to be 6.5. So with this one, what we're going to have here is 5 plus 7, 5 plus 7 is 12, 12 divided by 2, so this is going to be 6 times by 6.5. So what's uh, 6 lots of 6.5? That's going to give me 39, isn't it? 6 times by 6.5. Let's just make sure I'm not going nuts. Uh, there we go. So that's going to be now 39. 
And again, I use meters, so this will be meters squared. If you have here um, an odd and an even number and you come up with uh, a, a point, a point five, um, doesn't really matter. You could have had anything on here. Right, here goes. Now, let's say you really didn't like that particular method. I think it's, it's definitely worth learning. And certainly if you take your maths any further, um, it's quite important that you do that. Let's just take these dimensions again and look at doing this. So what we'll do, we'll say again, this, this was six. Uh, this was, uh, this one was 10, wasn't it? Let's put that on. This one was 10 and uh, this one was gonna be eight. And these were all in meters. What I'm now going to do is simply get the perpendicular height and I'm gonna put one just there and I'm gonna put one just there. So what we actually have here is one triangle here, one rectangle here and one triangle here. And we could split this up. Uh, you could even be cheeky and have these two as the same, but I'll show you how to do it because I'm gonna apply it to the next one as well. So let's just, uh, let's get a, a, a bolder color to do that. So what we've got over here is the first one, which is a triangle. Then we've got a rectangle and these are really sketchy. So apologies that they're not perfect. That's in the middle, that's what we've got. And then finally, we've got another triangle and that triangle is going to be the same as the one on the left. Let's be careful and put the dimensions on. Firstly, this is going to be six. This is going to be six. We know that this whole length is 10 and these are equally split. So this is going to be two and this is going to be two. So that gives me my 10 on my base. We know this height is eight. We know this height is eight and we know this height is eight. Area of a little right angle triangle, two times by eight divided by two. We do the base times height and half it. That's going to be eight. Six times by eight is going to give me 48. Two times by eight divided by two is eight. So all we do is add the eight to the 48 to the eight, which again gives us this quantity here of 64. So I just split it into now a uh, one rectangle and two triangles. With this one here, if, if you weren't confident in using a formula, let's split this one up. So what we'll have is a rectangle here, and then next to it, I will have this triangle. So all I'm doing is dropping the perpendicular down here and cutting this up. So let's just put that on. So that's what I'm doing. I'm saying rectangle and then triangle. So if we put the dimensions on these, let's just do that. Then that goes like that. So we have here, this is gonna be five. Of course, this is five and this is going to be 6.5. This one right here is going to be two because we've got five here, this total is seven, so that's gonna be two and that's gonna be 6.5. So five times by 6.5 is gonna give me 32.5. Two times six and a half divided by two is just six and a half. And then of course we add the 32 and a half to the six and a half and funnily enough, we get the 39. So again, if you're unsure, you can just split that up into a collection of rectangles and triangles. Um, it's not my preferred method, but again, entirely up to you, depending on your confidence level. Okay, let's uh, let's do something else. Let's do uh, a little, something a, a bit different. So what I'll do, um, I'll draw this, and what we'll say then is the following. Now I'm going to give this a, we'll say that this has a, a perpendicular height. Let's put a perpendicular height on. And we will say now that the perpendicular height, let's go for uh, six centimeters. So that's six centimeters. I'm going to say that this is going to be now, and we'll make this quite challenging. We'll say that this is gonna be 50 millimeters. And we'll say now that the area, so the area on this one, area is going to be equal to, let's go for 42 centimeters squared. What we're going to do is find now, uh, first the base, so we'll find uh, base length, and then we'll really, really push ourselves out, and what we'll do on the second part, and this will be um, really nice, uh, we will go ahead and um, we will find the perimeter.
So this is, is really stretching, uh, stretching our, our knowledge, but it'll be good fun nonetheless. So what we're going to do is find this length. And all I'm going to do is, is just call this x. Let's just call this x. So find the base length. We'll say this is x. So what we know is that the area is the top plus the bottom. So it's a plus b divided by 2 multiplied now by the perpendicular height. So let's just put these numbers in. So what we've got is the area is 42, and then that's going to be the top plus the bottom. So what I've got is 50 millimetres. These are in centimetres, so this is 5 centimetres. So what I've got is 5 plus x, or x plus 5. It doesn't matter. x plus 5 and 5 plus x are the same. So I'm adding the top and the bottom using the correct units. I divide that by 2 and multiply it now by the perpendicular height. The perpendicular height here is going to be 6. It's entirely up to you how you deal with this from here. What I'm going to do is simply write now, and you might want to bracket this off, I'm going to write that 42 is going to be equal to x plus 5. Now, 6 divided by 2 gives me 3. So this is 3 lots of x plus 5. So 42 divided by 3 is going to give me 14. 14 is equal to x plus 5. And solving this equation, we can see from here now, all I've done is split it, that x is going to be equal to 9. So we've got x is equal to 9. So let's check that that works. So 5 plus 9 divided by 2 times by 6. Well, 5 plus 9 is going to give me 14. 14 divided by 2 times by 6. 7 times by 6. And that, of course, does give me 42. So we can see that this is correct. So all I've done is substituted into the formula. What we now want is the perimeter. Um, if you don't know Pythagoras' theorem um, at this stage, then this may go um, a bit sort of um, out there. Don't worry if you haven't, you'll learn it at some point and you will be able to apply this. So what we want then is this length right here and this length is going to be y. And we could say that this is going to be z, but this will also be y in this particular case. If we look at what we've got, splitting this up like I split it before, what we've got here now is a triangle on the end. Then we've got this rectangle in the middle. And then with this particular shape, we have a congruent, which means identical or same shape, same size triangle on the end. So what we've got is the following. So if we look at this, we know that this length is going to be 5. Now, that 2 is 5. If all of this is 9, then this one is going to be 2, and this one is going to be 2. So what I'm going to do is simply find the value of y using Pythagoras' theorem on these little right-angle triangles here. We know that that is going to be 6, and that is going to be 6. To find this length right here, which is y, we know that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So y squared is equal to 2 squared plus 6 squared using Pythagoras' theorem. So y squared is going to be equal to 4 plus 36. y squared is going to be equal to 40. So y is going to be equal to the positive square root of 40. Just um, if you put this in your calculator, this is going to come up as y is equal to, and it will simplify this, and that should give you 2 root 10. Don't worry if it does. If you just put in here the square root of 40, the calculator will write it as 2 root 10. So what we're going to have then is the following. The perimeter of the shape, just consider, we know that x is 9, so this is 9. y is now, we met, these, are, these two are the same. This is going to be 2 root 10. And this is going to be 2 root 10. So the perimeter is the distance around the outside. So this is going to be 5 centimetres plus 2 root 10 plus 9 plus another 2 root 10. So all we have here is 14 plus, if we've got 2 root 10 and 2 root 10, add those together, that's 4 root 10. And that will be centimetres. And we save this is an exact value. 
if we wanted to find what that was as a decimal, 14 plus uh, 4 root 10. And we can go ahead and see what that gives us. 26.6. Uh, so we can say that's 26.6 centimetres. And I've given that to 1 dp, 1 decimal place. So hopefully that's... Um, that's showing you how you can use the air that's repeating. And we kind of extended on a little. There might be some more crazy questions. But essentially, all we do is simply do the average of the two parallel sides. Add the top and the bottom, divide by two, multiply by the height, and that will give you the area. You can split it up into rectangles and triangles, but it would be nice if you were capable or interested in, in learning that formula to work it. Um, it works out nicely working backwards here, as we can see, by simply substituting in the numbers and solving for a missing length given an area. And then we've just extended it to look at the perimeter also.